Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Do you agree with that, sir? Absolutely yes, Mom Pao. How about our parents? Do you agree? I'm sure we all agree. Wow, it is a great thing to know that our parents really value education. Yes, Mom Pao. That is why they are here right now. So what are we waiting for, sir? Let us formally begin our parents' orientation. A wonderful morning, supportive parents, fellow teachers, and amazing administrators. Welcome, Welcome to, to Goodtree Good International School, School Parents Orientation School Year 2021 to 2022. I am Teacher Pao. And I am Sir Leo. And, and we are your hosts for today. today. Sir Leo, what makes a child gifted and talented may not always be good grades in school, but a different way of looking at the world and learning. Indeed, Ma'am Fao. That's why the vision of this school is to develop every learner by instilling intelligence quotient, emotional quotient, and love quotient in the best Christian school environment. Yes, that's true. And this parent's orientation will not be possible without God who gives wisdom and strength to all of us. May I request all of you to please stand? to acknowledge the presence of God and may we call on Miss Ann Lusada to lead the opening prayer. Good morning. Let us feel the presence of our Almighty God through this prayer. Let us close our eyes and let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you today with a grateful heart. We give thanks for your mercy and love that gives us hope, for giving us the challenges that make us strong, and for all of the wonderful blessings that you have done. As we begin and start our parent-teacher conference for the school year 2021-2022, May you give us a right heart, a peaceful mind, and a well-organized flow of this virtual meeting. May you bless this program, the teachers, the administrators, our dear students, the parents, and the upcoming school year. We also pray for the people who will speak for today's PTC. Anoint their lips, guide them, and fill them with joyfulness, wisdom, and knowledge, as well as the listeners for today's program. Today, we are claiming a successful flow and a prosperous parent-teacher conference, for we believe that yours truly is the victory. This all we pray in the sweetest name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Are you ready to hear God's message for today, Mom Pao? Yes, I am. How about our parents? Thumbs up if you are ready. Okay, that's good. So let us lend our ears and be hopeful of the good news to be delivered by our dedicated school director, Reverend David Jung, and to give also his opening remarks. Let's give him a round of applause. Good morning, our dear parents. The new school year 2021 to 2022 has just begun. We never expected this pandemic time reached this new, until this new school year. I think uh, this school year also we will have virtual class and we still struggling with this kind of situation. I suggest to you all parents with our students, let us come back to God with a humble heart, confess our sins and ask God's help. Even we are experienced these difficult trials, but God gave to us as a good school 
special gift. Our parents had had experienced difficulties of parking, and I prayed a lot for how many years, and God given to us and answered my prayers, and we have additional 2,750 square meters of lot. Furthermore, last year many our old students transferred to public school and other school, but they coming back, and also many new students became our Guthrie family. Yesterday, I saw some student, all the student wanted to come back, but uh, especially grade seven slot is not available anymore, and we could not accept the student, and the parent cried and went back home. This is a really a sign of blessing. Let us all give thanks to God with applause and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah! Thank you. Today, I want to grab this opportunity and share some short advice to you with Word of God. How to establish authority at home. Let us read Bible first. Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 18 up to 21. Uh, let us read the Word of God. If a man has a stubborn and rebellious son who does not obey his father and mother and will not listen to them when they discipline him, his father and mother shall take hold of him and bring him to the elders at the gate of his town. They shall say to the elders, This son of ours is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey us. He is a profligate and drunkard. Then all the men of his town shall stone him to death. You must purge the evil from among you. All Israel will hear of it and be afraid. Amen. Amen. Thank you. When we are raising our children, if we are experiencing the sweet and happiness always, it's how we are dreaming for. But when you are raising your children, some of you thought, example, sana, eh? yung bata, ay hindi aking anak. Doon sa kabilang kapipahay, yung anak ay sana aking anak. Have you ever thought about it? When you have this kind of feeling, when we see very cute of our children, especially when they are third month, one year, two years, and three years old. How pretty and cute our children. But when they became four, five, six, and getting old, if mother asking something, they are rebellious. And they said no. And even some of our kids, they are close their ears. Some of them are shouting and spoke bad word. Or some are uh, speak back. And some of them are close their door and enter their own room and don't like to open their room. If we are experiencing this kind of situation with our kids, and some of our kids, they are throw some things and destroy it, 
and we could not control them anymore. It's really, we feel very sad. Sana, this boy and this girl is not my own child. When we experience it, we feel very sad. The life is not easy. The parents are giving their uh, hard work and sacrifice many things and they are tired. But let's see that our kids are rebellious and they do not understand the heart of mother or father. We could not enjoy our life anymore. Similar situation we are experiencing in the school. Teachers wanted to give their best. So they prepare lesson plan very well. But when the teacher entered classroom, the student did not give their attention. They have no interest to learn. And when the teachers are giving the lecture, with a husky voice and student turn off the uh, camera and, and they don't like to listen even they open the camera and they are doing some other things. And this kind of situation, some teachers cried and what they said, I don't like to become a teacher. Like this, at home, inside the classroom, why there are some rebellious children? I can say this kind of parent or teacher, they could not build up their authority. So, they lose their authority toward kids. This kind of things happening not only at this moment in time, as we read the Bible verse today, and very long, long time ago, the time of Moses, there were rebellious kids against God, against their parents. If the rebellious child situation is when they are preparatory level or grade one and two, we understand maybe as a mother or father said, because you are still very young, uh, when you will grow up, maybe the child will be okay. But when the child are became grade six and entered junior high school, and the parents still suffering with this kind of situation and they lost total hope. If you are the one who will have this kind of cases, how you can overcome it? We are all experiencing pandemic stress, mental stress, physical difficulties because we could not go somewhere, lack of exercise. So all are tired. And some of the mothers said, I don't know. It's up to you. They are giving up like that. So this morning, I want to give a small tip, a few tips to you. So how you can build up your authority at home. The first, be sure to make a rule, a home rule, with your children at home. When you are build up your home rules, make a note of the penalties if the children will have violation. For example, make a roll and up. If you will going out and in, and if you are not 
report it to father or me, mother, you will get some penalty. So what I mean, every time magpaalam ka, pagpasok, labas. First violation, I will deduct your allowance from your allowance, 20% of your allowance. Is it okay? If the child agreed, and you write the uh, rule one. Rule two, you enjoy the internet game. Yeah, I understand. But if you are full day, if you are having internet game, it will harm your mental health and physical health. I will allow you two hours a day. Not anymore. Supposedly one hour long, but I know the game is very fun and giving you a lot of uh, fun time, so I'll give you two hours. But if you are violate it, one week, you cannot use your mobile phone or your laptop. Third rule, if you will lie to me, First violation, 50% deducted your allowance. Second violation, you will not receive any allowance. If your children are still small, preparatory, you can say it, anak, when you are play with the toys, after you play, you have to put it back, the box, or the place and if you will not do that I will make a chair there and you will sit the chair for 10 minutes or you will stand face on the wall and 10 minutes you have to stay there without any talk is it okay write it the fourth you must not uh, skip your class do not be late do always your homework if you will not do that let's have this kind of penalty if you will make it this kind of home rule you will not uh, quarrel with your child many parents they don't have their own home rule that's why someday, sometimes uh, forgiving sometimes became very strict and losing temper. Make it roll. So you will not be stressful. Your authority will be established. The second advice what I can give you is work closely with teachers. The parents should build up teacher's authority. Our teacher will build up parent authority. This system should go together. So we will have future. Parents, if you are working, if you are in other country, it's not easy to control your children. Virtual teaching is more difficult than face-to-face -face teaching. Teachers should prepare more, a lot of time. And if parents will destroy the authority of teacher, teacher cannot handle your child. Teacher will do their best to build up your authority and same time, parents, you must help your children's teacher. Always respect the teachers and communicate with teacher for the sake of your child. The third advice what I can give you, after corporal punishment, do not hug your child because you feel sorry for him. What it means? 
some parents after punishing kawawa I understand because the child is so lovely and then I heard I give punishment but remember we are thinking about the future of our children if you want to show some special affection to your child in a regular time ordinary time some children they are hungry of uh, affection what it means the ordinary day the parents did not give any applause any praises any compliment and then after punishing long if the parents are embracing kissing and hugging and say sorry and saying i love you of course our kids want to hear it and want to feel about that that's why intentionally our kids will do something wrong because they miss and they are thirsty to say you say i love you anak and what i advise to you show your affection on a regular basis not after punishment the lastly what i say to you if child break the rule let them learn the result will harm to it, to them the rule bring the bright future of our kids as we know this world and this society is not like a home always not like a school that our kids must know after violate something they will receive the result it will harm to them there are the parents don't like to see bright future of our kids no all of our parents want to see bright future of our kids it's our first day and first orientation with you parents do not lose your authority before your child establish your authority through this build up the teacher's authority the bible clearly advises to us if there is a stubborn child rebellious child and you could not control them anymore you must report it to the elder and then the elder will give the punishment and the old testament mention it can be stone and giving the death penalty so strict this childhood times habit and attitude will bring for lifetime let us build up the good character of our kids this is school year 2021 to 2022 i wanna expect more beautiful cooperation between teachers school and parents thank you to become a gtis family again in this year we will do our best to take care of your child train your child build up your child may god bless us all thank you Thank you so much, Reverend David Dujong, for that encouraging words. I agree, Mom Pao.
the students already met their advisors last Wednesday. And I think the parents are now excited to know who will be the advisor of their children. Right, Mom Pao? Yes, and now to formally introduce to our to introduce our beautiful Yes, and now to formally introduce our beautiful and handsome teachers, may we call on Miss Caseline Domingo. Good morning, parents, students, and teachers. I would like to introduce to you the GTIS faculty and staff for school year 2021-2022. To begin with, our school founder and school director, Reverend David Jung. Our finance manager, Madam Rose Jung. Our assistant administrator and marketing manager, Mr. Faith Jung. He is pursuing Doctor of Philosophy in Religious Studies at Philippine Christian University, Manila. He took up Master of Business Administration at De La Salle University, Manila. TESOL at American TESOL Institute in Florida, USA. A Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, major in Marketing and Advertising Management at De La Salle University, Dasmariñas, Cavite. A Registered Marketing Professional, Certified Marketing Consultant, and Tech Entrepreneurship. Professor Lucila R. Calairo, our School Consultant. He has a doctorate degree in Educational Management, took at De La Salle University, Dasmariñas. A Master of Arts in English Language Teaching at Philippine Normal University, Manila, and a Certified National K-12 Trainer. Ms. Love Jung, our HR Director. He graduated of Bachelor of Arts, major in Sociology at University of the Philippines, Las Banas, ay cum laude. She also studied at University of British Columbia, Canada, and has a certificate in Early Childhood Advance, taken at De La Salle University, Dasmariñas, Cavite. Ms. Caseline Domingo, Head Teacher. She is pursuing Master of Arts in Education major in Literature at Philippine Normal University, Manila. She graduated a Bachelor of Secondary Education major in English at Cavite State University, Rosario, Cavite. She is a recognized member of Literature Educators Association of the Philippines at PNU Manila. Ms. Frances Janugdo, our school registrar and cashier. She graduated a Bachelor of Fine Arts major in Advertising Arts at Far Eastern University, Sampaloc, Manila. We have Reverend Christian E. Madonza, our school pastor. He graduated a Bachelor of Theology at World Mission Seminary, Trece Martires, Cavite. Pastor Adrian Arabejo, he graduated a Bachelor of Theology World Mission Seminary at Trece Martires Cavite. For the advisors for the school year 2021-2022, we have Ms. Karina R. Domanais, preschool teacher. She graduated a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration Management, major in Human Resource Development Management at University of Perpetual Health System, Delta Bacoor Cavite. She has a teacher certificate at Cavite State University main campus in Indang. Grade 1 Hope Advisor, Ms. Mary Ann R. Lazada. She graduated a Bachelor of Education major in Mathematics at Laguna State Polytechnic University, Los Banos, Laguna. Grade 2 Love Advisor, Ms. Mary Monina Joyce M. Goyer. Garcia. She took a Bachelor of Education major in Mathematics at Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Manila. Ms. Fao An Mozo, Grade 3 Honesty Advisor. She took a Bachelor of Education major in General Science at Philippine Normal University, Manila. She has a TESDA certificate for dressmaking. Grade 4 Obedience Advisor, Mr. Leonardo A. Lanchon Jr. She graduated the Bachelor of Science in Industrial Education, major in Drafting Technology, cum laude at Cavite State University, Rosario. Grade 4 Great Advisor, Ms. Lizelle Polita. She graduated the Bachelor of Education, major in English, at Central Bicol State University of Agriculture at Sipokot Campus. Grade 5 Patient Advisor, Mrs. Maria Verica S. Manabat. She took a Bachelor of Education major in Mathematics at Cavite State University Main Campus in Dang, Cavite. 
Grade 6 Humility Advisor, Ms. Paula Jane Ibanez. She took a Bachelor of Education major in General Education at Batangas State University Main Campus. Our Grade 7 Peace Advisor and Guidance Counselor, Mrs. Charmaine Marie Arabejo. She is pursuing Master of Educational Leadership and Management at Philippine Normal University, Manila. She has a Certificate in Early Childhood Advance and took a Bachelor of Science in Polytechnic with Certificate in Information System Management at Cavite State University, Indang. Grade A Joy Advisor, Mr. Leslie Menard Perez. He took a Bachelor of Science in Industrial Education, major in Computer Education at Technological University of the Philippines, Taft, Manila. Grade 9 Faith Advisor, Ms. Jennifer Valespin. She took a Bachelor of Education major in English at Cavite State University, Indang Campus. Grade 10 Grace Advisor, Mr. Christian D. Costa. He is pursuing Master of Arts in Teaching Mathematics at Western College Incorporated and took up Bachelor of Education major in Mathematics at Tese Martires City College, Tese Martires Cavite. Grade 11 Integrity Advisor, Ms. Jerseline F. Rosano. She took up Bachelor of Education major in English at Cavite State University Main Campus in Dang Cavite. Grade 12 Advisor, Ms. Noelin B. Solano. She took a Bachelor of Education major in Biological Science at Holy Child Jesus College at Gumaca, Quezon. And lastly, one teacher, Ms. Christine Faye E. Teralba. She graduated a Bachelor of Education major in English at Cavite State University Main Campus in Dang, Cavite. And that's it for our faculty and staff. For the general rules and policies of school year 2021-2022, GDIS conducts online learning wherein live and experiential classes are facilitated by well-trained teachers. Last July 27, we had a seminar here at Kutra International School and an ongoing seminars in virtual meetings. August 11, we had a student dry run wherein the students Navigate and instructed by the teachers of how they will access their accounts in Canvas and even Teams. We have full curriculum that includes both core and foundation subjects stated at DepEd Order Number 43 Series of 2013, also known as the K-12 curriculum. We also have the daily activities that provides opportunity for movement and hands-on learning, which there is synchronous and asynchronous activity. When we say synchronous, students learn at the same time. Well, communications happens at real time and possible more engaging for our students. It allows for instant feedback and clarification. For asynchronous, we have an activity in Canvas, wherein students learn at different times. Communication is not live, but possibly more convenient and flexible that allows students to work at their own pace. For the GTIS online platforms, we have Canvas and Microsoft Teams. Canvas is for the official learning management wherein asynchronous activity is found there and for the Microsoft Teams for live classes. The applicable devices for online learning, you can use the desktop, laptop, tablet, cell phones, earphones, and headset and recommending a stable internet connection. Also, for logging in uh, before you enroll, uh, we give you this kind of um, sheets, how to log in. But you may also ask us on, on help.mygtis.com. Next, how will the children assess or learn for this school year 2021-2022? We are utilizing the UDL or Universal Design for Learning, a combination of synchronous and asynchronous learning wherein the students are allowed to engage. Here in the illustration, you can see that there is a representation, engagement, and action expression which the students perform or will do in the online classes. How will the children be assessed? Holistically, we have here uh, wherein we are allowing our students to reflect 
for or for their own learning and we are basing it on DepEd order number 31 series of 2020 there in there is written and performance tasks and allotting 10 percent on each component it will be discussed for uh, later for the grading system how will the children be disciplined? There are three areas, the essential agreements, school policies for online learning, and the guidance counseling. When you say essential agreements, it happens between the subject teacher or the advisor and students within the online classes. There will be rewards and disciplinary action, whatever uh, they perform and the behaviors that they executed or exhibited in the online class. The school policies, aside from the handbook that we gave to you, uh, the teachers in charge will be also giving instruction for these policies. And the guidance counseling, we want to make sure that the wellness and the behavior and even uh, the attitudes of our students are perfectly fine. And the guidance counselor is always available for this matter. For the synchronous class, students are expected to be in their class at 8.30 a.m. We don't have Saturday class anymore and here is the schedule. For kinder, we have 8.30 to 11.20 a.m. for the beginning and the start of the uh, beginning and end of their class. Pre-kinder, 1 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Grade 1 to grade 12, we have 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. The GTIS school calendar and class schedules are also available for download and at the same time the advisor will be posting the schedule at the homeroom channel of their uh, class section. The asynchronous class, um, we are using Canvas and students have their flexible time to answer their module in Canvas. For the netiquettes and guidelines for online classes, we have the following. Let me read. So we treat remote learning at the same time for, for this time. And then uh, choose a quiet area, have an organized workspace, wear appropriate clothing, and check the invite, be on time. I know that you can see it. Uh, on screen and the advisors and even the subject teachers will also be reminding all your uh, children on what to do during the online classes school uniform is not necessary to wear in an online class but students are encouraged to wear neat and decent clothes students also are required to speak in english during online classes if you have questions and clarifications and need of technical matter uh, questions, you can visit us here at help.mygtis.com or contact us through this number. Email us at info at mygtis.com or even chat us at Facebook or the official uh, Facebook of Goodry International School. And for the last um, time i want to share with you the proverbs 22 verse 6 it says there train up a child in the way he should go even when he's old he will not depart from it again thank you very much dear parents students and welcome in our school god bless thank you so much miss casey lynn domingo and now to give the grading system and the procedure on the ranking of honors, let us welcome Mr. Christian Costa. Good day everyone. Welcome once again to Good Tree International School, school year 2021-2022. This time let us talk about the K-12 grading system that our school GTIS have adopted from the DepEd Memorandum. This was adopted from the Department Order Number 31 Series of 2020, entitled Interim Guidelines for Assessment and Grading in Light of Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan. This is entitled Interim guidelines because we are just using this one in this time of COVID-19 pandemic. This is just temporary and this is just provisionary. 
wherein the initial grade of 60% will be still transmuted for a final grade which is 75%. On the other hand, these guidelines will be used because quarterly ex uh, examination will no longer be administered as part of the grading system for this school year but allotting an additional 10 percent for each component which will be the written works and for the performance task comparing to the previous grading system that we are using before we have the three components the written works the performance task and the quarterly assessment but this time we only have two components that is the one that i have mentioned the written works and the performance task the table that you can see right now on your screen is the, the percentage or the weight distribution for the summative assessment components for the learning areas or for the subjects from the junior high school including the elementaries from grade 1 to grade 6. So let's start with uh, the subjects such as language, social studies and the ESP or the Christian living that we are using here in our school. So for the written works, it consists of 40% of their total grade and 60% of the total grade for their performance task. For the weights of uh, the percentage for the science and mathematics subject, we have 50% equal percentage for written and performance tasks. In the other hand, for the subjects such as MAPE and techno technical and livelihood education, we have 30% for the written works and 70% for the performance task. Another table that, will, uh, that you can see on your screen is the weight distribution of the summative assessment components for the senior high school students. As the same two components we are using, the written works and the performance task. Here in our school, we have um, academic strands such as GAS, ABM, and the STEM strand. And also we have the computer programming str uh, strand. So here are the percentage uh, of their grade. For the written works, core subject, it is consisting of 40%. 60% of performance task. For the academic track that I have mentioned a while ago, for all other subjects, written works consist of 40% and 60% consist for the performance task. For the subjects such as work immersion, research, business enterprise, and other performance subject, 50% for written and 50% for per performance task. For the computer programming strand or the TVL track, we have 30% for all written works and 70% for all performance tasks in all subjects for the senior high school. Another table that you can see is a sample. Sample computation of uh, written works and performance tasks in the language, AP or ESP for the grade 1 to grade 10 subject, and also for the senior high school subjects. So as what you can see here, um, we have uh, the sample grade for learner A, and we have here the written works and the performance task, say for example, for the subject of English. So the total score will be 85, and the student got 77 out of 85. Then the percentage score is 26.4. For the performance task, 75 out of 100, and it is consisting of 45% out of 60% weighted average. As what you can see on the blue box, we have there the initial grade of 81.4 and the final grade that will appear on the quarterly grade will be 80 88 percent that will be the one that is transmuted as um, the memorandum that we are using from the depth ed another sample computation that you can see is for the senior high school okay so for the senior high school, we have uh, another student, Learner A, for the written works. I'm sorry. So this will be for the MAPE, EPP, and TLE subject for the grade 1 to grade 10. So for the uh, written works from the total of 85 points, 77 out of 85, the weighted average will be 27.3%. For the performance task, that will be 20, um, 56 over 75, and that consists of 52.5% out of 70. So the initial grade of 79.8% will be transmuted as a final grade for 
87%. We are also using the same transmutation table adopted from the DepEd Memorandum. So, say for example, if the student got 77.60 as the initial grade, that will be transmuted as 86% for the final grade. If you are asking for the grading system that uh, the kindergarten teachers are using in our school, we are also adopt uh, we also adopted the memorandum from the DepEd wherein checklist and anecdotal records are being used instead of numerical grades. But uh, the kindergarten teachers are also using the same grading sheet for uh, the teacher to assess the learners or to evaluate the learners. Here is the sample checklist that you can see on the report card of the student. So it assessed the different domains such as the gross motor domain, fine motor domain, and other domains that will be developed by the kinder student. Now let us proceed with the General Academic Achievement Award. For a student to be considered as an honor student, he or she must obtain a grade of 85% in all subjects, including character grade in every quarter, and must attend all school online activities, and must have no major offense. For the gold medalist awardee, he or she must have a general average of 95% and above, and must uh, obtain a grade of 85% in all subjects including character grade. For a silver medalist, student must have a general average of 93 to 94% and must have a lower grade or, or, or lowest grade of 85% in all subjects including character grade. For the bronze medalist, student must get a general average of 90 to 92 percent and must have 85 percent lowest grade in all subjects including character education for the academic achiever the student must grade uh, must obtain a grade of 82 percent in all subjects including including character grade in every quarter and must have a general average of 87 to 89 percent must attend all school activities and must have no major offense for the director's choice awardee the student must have the highest general average in the class must attend all school activities and must have no major offense another table that you can see on your screen is uh, a sample grade compared by the learner a and learner b so if you can see here the general average of the first student is 94% and the second student will be 93%. But the first student has a lowest, a lowest grade of 84%. The first student will be classified under Academic Achiever Awardee because it didn't pass. It didn't pass the classification for that student to be classified as an honor student because the lowest grade point was 84%. In the other hand, the student B will be classified as a silver medalist because the general average is 93% and the lowest grade is 91%. If you have a question regarding with the grading system and with the general academic award, you may just type it on the chat box and later it will be entertained by our MC. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Sir Christian. Now to give us the information regarding education service contracting and senior high school orientation for our high school students, may I call on Mrs. Germaine Marie Arabejo. A round of applause, please. Good morning, parents. It is my pleasure to present to you the ESE. So, the, it is the Education Service Contracting the school year 2021-2022. Again, ESE is a government financial assistance for the junior high school students. So, first, let us see who are eligible for this um, grant. Those elementary graduates from public or private school. And then, 
those students who are Filipino citizen. So, what are the requirements for this grant? First is, the parents should fill out the form, the ESE application form, the 2x2 two two ID photo, the PSA or the Philippine Statistic Authority Certified Birth Certificate, the report card or the Form 138, and their proof of income. For this school year 2021 to 2022, the amount of ESC grant per grantee for grade 7 to grade 10 will be 9,000 pesos. How about the terms of this ESC grant? For the terms, it covers four years of junior high school starting from grade 7. The grant remains if the grantee is promoted to the next level. And lastly, if the student is enrolled in an ESC participating junior high school. Another, the grant is terminated if the grantee does any one of the following. First, the student drops out for non-health reason in the middle of the school year, does not re-enroll the following school year, the student fails to be promoted to the next level or that student was retained, the student suspend, was suspended for more than two weeks, or dismissed or expelled. And lastly, the grant will be terminated if that student transfer to a non-ESC particip participating junior high school, like the DEPED schools, the public schools. So that's end for the ESC orientation. Good morning again, parents. For this time, we will be discussing about the Senior High School Voucher or Orientation or Program. So first, again, let us see who are eligible for this voucher, for this Senior High School Voucher. Those students who are, those grade 10, graduate from public or private school, or we call them completers. And who are qualified voucher recipients, those grade 10 completers in DepEd public schools and grade 10 completers who are ESC grantee. It means they are automatically will have this uh, senior high school voucher. For the others, the requirements of this is the PSA, the Philippine Statistic Authority Certified Birth Certificate, report card, Form 138, the completion certificate, and their QVR voucher. So you will see here the sample of the QBR that they will that they need to submit in the office. For the amount of the senior high school voucher, those students who grad who are completers from private school will receive 14,000 and from public will receive 17,500. 17, For the terms of the senior high school voucher, again, it covers two years of senior high school starting from grade 11 and the grant or this voucher remains if the grantee is promoted to grade 12 and studies in a non deped senior high school. So there's no maintaining grades are required within the school year. This voucher will be terminated if the grantee does any one of the following. First, drops out for non-health reasons in the middle of the school year, does not re-enroll the following school year, fails to be promoted to the next level, or that student was retained, the students were suspended for more than two weeks, dismissed or expelled. And lastly, the voucher will be terminated if that student transfer another senior high school within the school year. So at this moment, the PAYAC released an advisory that still the DepEd, um, yeah, the DepEd, well, uh, we need to wait for the announcement of DepEd regarding in applica application uh, regarding of your application for the senior high school voucher. So, if you have any questions, you may contact us in info at mygts my and call us in this number. Thank you and God bless everyone. Thank you so much. 
Ma'am Chari, and to unveil your inquiry for business matters, may we invite Ms. Frances Yugto, our school cashier slash registrar. Let's give her a round of applause. Hello. Good morning, parents and guardian. I am Francis Jan Yugto, the school registrar and cashier. And I am here to discuss the business matters. First of all, on behalf of the school administration, thank you for entrusting your children here in Goodry International School. We welcome you this school year 2021-2022. To start, I am going to talk about the four modes of payment, which are cash, semi-annual, quarterly, and monthly. For those who will pay monthly, payment should be done every first week of the month. You will receive a notice slip every end of the month in your children's Canvas account. For this school year, since we started in the month of August, the first payment will be in the first week of September. For those who will pay quarterly, Payment should be done in the first week of October, January, and April. And for those who will pay semi-annual, the second payment should be done in the first week of December. And also, we have major events every year. And these are the Foundation Day, Christmas Party, Graduation, and the Recognition Day. There will be payments in the said events, and the school will send a message regarding these events. Our dear parents and guardians, I just want to inform you that all kinds of payments should be done only in the office and through online banking. Teachers, other personnel, and staff are not allowed to receive payments or money from you. It is strictly prohibited. In every payment, Always ask for a receipt and keep it as a proof of payment. To remind you of the deadline of payments, as, as, as I said a while ago, we will be giving you a notice slip at the end of the month. And for those who don't have time to come and pay in our office, you may deposit your payment in the school bank account. And this is our bank account. Please take a screenshot for your reference. Or you may send us a message through email or in our official Facebook page and ask about these details. Upon deposit of the payment, kindly inform the office staff immediately so that we will give a receipt. We can have a good partnership for ensuring your, the quality of education. Thank you, parents, and once again, welcome to Goodtree International School. Thank you, Ma'am Francis. Before we proceed to the second part of this program, let us read some important announcement. First, on August 19 to 21, we will be having an asynchronous classes because our teachers will be attending in set seminar. Yes, and additional for that, remember that the start of our class will be on August 16, 2021. All right. We hope so. All right. So the first part of this orientation is about to end. But we are requesting all of you to please follow those reminders. Okay. Yes. Once again, we are requesting all of you to stay in this Zoom meeting because we have the second part where you will meet and greet the advisor and to give some reminders and to answer the question that you have in mind. So please uh, wait for the meantime and you will be redirected to the breakout rooms. Once, Once again, again, welcome to, to this academic year 2021 to 2022 in Goodry International School. See you, parents, in the breakout rooms. rooms.